Treasury seeming to resemble a colander rather than a government department in the run-up to this year's budget, at least judging by the number of apparent leaks on the big decisions running up to the opening of that famous red box. But Chancellor of the Exchequer George Osborne still came up with a few surprises. From a personal finance point of view, three things stand out in particular from the new budget. First, an increase in the annual ISA contribution to a maximum of £20,000 from April 2017. Second, the launch of the new Lifetime ISA for the under 40s, also from April 2017. And third, a decision to cut capital gains tax to 20% from 28% for high and additional rate payers and to 10% from 18% for basic rate payers. Now, from a stock market and investment perspective, the big winners at the moment look to be asset managers and administrators, while bookmakers, junior oil explorers and house builders, all of their share prices look to be welcoming the budget too. The big losers, well, that could be the fizzy drinks firms, given the imposition of a new sugar tax. So, to take the three personal finance issues in order in a little bit more detail, first, the annual ICE allowance. From 6th April 2017, you'll be able to put in a maximum of 20 grand a year into your ISA, up from the £15,240 limit, which applies to the tax years that are about to end and about to begin. Second, this new lifetime ISA. This will be available to those aged 18 to 40 from April 2017. You can put in a maximum of £4,000 a year. For every four quid you contribute, the government will put in one more, up to the age of 50. That can go into stocks and shares or cash, and can be used for two things either buying your first home up to a limit of 450 grand or your retirement from the age of 60 onwards. Now you can access and withdraw the cash before you need it, but there are some big costs if you do. You lose the government top ups, any capital growth on the bonus and pay a 5% penalty too. You'll be able to roll your help to buy ISA into your lifetime ISA, but you can't have the government bonus paid into both of them at the same time. The help to buy ISA will stop being available to new savers as of 2019 as planned. And then third, the change in the capital gains tax. 18% for higher and additional rate payers, down to 10 for basic rate payers, though the old higher 28% rates and 18% rates will still apply to residential property. Pensions next. The savers of the nation were spared radical changes, but there are still some points of which we all need to be aware. The rules on salary sacrifice look set to be tightened up, though pensions could be given a special, a special exemption from this. The government's going to be considering limiting the range of other benefits that attract income tax and national insurance contributions too when it comes to salary sacrifice schemes. The only real tangible shift came on redundancy payments. The first 30 grand of any such payment will remain tax free, but there'll now be national insurance contributions payable on the excess. In addition, the level of tax relievable on employer arranged pension advice rises from 150 to 500 pounds, while a new body will replace both the money advice service and the recently created pension wise. In sum, Rather than making pensions simpler, it's possible the Chancellor has made ISAs more complex, as he adds a lifetime ISA to the current menu of junior ISA, help to buy ISA, innovative finance ISA, as well as the standard stocks and shares and cash ISAs. Now, with regard to the investments that may be held within SIPs and ISAs, three themes quickly emerged in the stock market once the Chancellor had stopped speaking and sat down. The big winners look to be asset gatherers, managers and administrators such as Hargreaves Lansdowne, if I'm allowed to mention them here, and St James's Place, who will doubtless welcome the higher ISA limits and also the creation of that new lifetime ISA. Bookmaking stocks, William Hill and Ladbrokes, well they were up on the absence of new betting levies, junior oil explorers welcomed lower supplemental taxes on the North Sea, and house builders rose on the back of the new lifetime ISA again, which is designed to help first time buyers. The losers, well that was the fizzy drinks firm, there was pressure on Nichols, AG Bar and Britvic as Mr Osborne launched a sugary drinks tax, though the firms do have until 2018 to adapt their recipes before the levy kicks in. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.